Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Solutions Brewing <laughs> Podcast. Thank you. We'll start like a sudden start. I was like, what the hell are we talking about here? Well, you've got beers in front of you, so what the hell are you think you're talking about? All right, so I have a lovely lager here, which is from an unlabeled bottle. So this is a one-week lager. One week. This is a very special lager. From, sorry, from what? So from brewing to, to finish. From, from grain to glass is one week. Yeah. Seems short. Exceptionally short. Also amazing. <laughs> so, Rob, why don't you explain what uh, what you did to come to this uh, delicious delicious beer? So, I had been looking up some videos, or I stumbled across them. Uh, like I've heard of, you've heard of uh, ferment or pressure fermentation before, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, but I didn't know that it worked for loggers. So, I'd seen some videos of of this doing with loggers. So what you do is you you even use a lager yeast. You ferment at room temperature, so like 20 degrees, 23 degrees. Yeah. Uh, but under pressure. And it keeps all the esters and everything and diacetyl. Keeps it, yeah, prevents all, all those off flavors from going up. Yeah. Steve, we had a glass right here. I don't know why you went into that. Oh, I, that was literally <laughs> behind the can. I couldn't see it. <laughs> uh, well, rookie mistakes going on over here. It, 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 again, this thing... See, I, right I, there. I, 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 I thought he had to go it. to the can or something like that. Oh. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> no. Clearly a very special <laughs> episode of the Solutions Room podcast here. But so, yeah. so I saw this and I thought, i got to try this. Yeah. So I went and got a lager yeast and uh, came up with a recipe. And this is like, honestly, you, took, uh, you do your on, regular brew day, throw in a thing, ferment, throw in the fermenter, sorry, and then uh, it fermented out in like two, three days. Mm-hmm. And then I cold crashed it and that's it yeah and you had the like you've got your special uh setup that's the the coney keg that's actually got the uh so the corny keg yes i cut the uh i cut the dip tube mm-hmm. and then i replaced that with a flexible rubber tube and a float okay so that this way it would pick up beer off of the top mm. and then you use a spunding valve on top of uh on top of the the gas post and yeah. then that way can just vent gas at whatever pressure and i did it at 15 psi okay so th- so this has had like no additional carb- carbonation this is just as is from the vessel yeah so that's the only thing that's my first time trying it so it's a little well it's quite light on the carb so yeah i, I would probably force carb it a little bit next time mm-hmm. uh but other other than that or just give it more time but it's not bad compared to other beers that we've done under kind of a natural carb yeah. Sort of thing. Like, I'm thinking about this compared to the Black Swan or something like that that we've done, mm-hmm. which is very, very light on the carbon. This has more than that. The, it actually does, it is a little bit alive, mm-hmm. kind of on the tongue. Uh, it doesn't have much head retention or anything like that. Yeah, which, well, which I was going to say no no head retention whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> no head retention whatsoever. Uh, but no, it's, I find this in, like, loggers don't usually have a lot of head on them. That, anyway. That's true, too. But, like, this is incredibly smooth. Like, and it's got a, I'd say almost like a fruity kind of ester taste there, to it. There is a little bit of an ester. It's. I'd say right in the middle. It's, it's. A, yeah. Because it's got, it's got, like, a nice little malty sweetness at the beginning of it. But then it, it ends on that, like, it's got that little bit of ester and then just finishes clean. It's a cool concept considering that we have our bright tank that's rated for 30 psi, <laughs> where we could do this on a larger scale. So in theory, we could ferment in the bright tank. Yeah. Yes, Absolutely nothing that would prevent us from doing that. Maybe that's um, something only, we try. The, the only thing we would need is a spunding valve or some kind of thing, which I kind of want to get for the bright tank anyway, because right now its current pressure relief setup is bonkers uh, it's, it's not a it's good like, setup oh, you need to pressure relief from the liquid level I was like that's stupid <laughs> <laughs> so, or, or pop off the top and that's not a good well, not a good no, choice no, either that, yeah, let's, so both bad decisions but this is a damn good beer Rob. Yeah. I, I'm just I'm just amazed that it was a week like from yeah. like from well I was really surprised too because I thought it would it'd be like there's no way that works out I and mean, I tried I'm like you know what this is there's some plausibility to this. And this is a proper like five percent lager? Uh this is three point six. No, oh, good table lager. So yeah. this this is your day drinking lager. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> yeah, no, that's like like this would be perfect for, you know, eventual tap room is just like have this on and it's like 
doesn't matter because we go through it so quickly. It only takes a week to turn around. Just have like a fermenter constantly going on it. Yeah, I might maybe give it a little bit more time next time just because. There's, but there's I was, other, tr I was trying, I had a reason to yeah, do it sure. in a week because yeah. I wanted to like get it out and give it to somebody in a time. But I was curious to see how it would work out. No, it's. So I think it's a really good test. Yeah, it's a very good test. Beauty. Mm hmm. All right. So now that we've gone through that, what are we talking about today, guys? Well, it's beers mostly. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We we could talk about, I don't know, what, what is new in beer news. Like, the only thing I've heard new in beer news is Ontario paying a lot of money to the Ford government for breaking the beer store's contract. That's the only, like, notable thing I've heard lately. Yeah, that, that was a big thing. That was kind of stupid. Yeah, because doesn't that ends in, like, 16 months or something like that. So they could have just waited. Yeah. Wait a year. Uh, for those who don't know, because uh, Ontario still has like a fairly highly regulated uh, beer market. So unlike in Alberta, where there's, you know, usually more liquor stores in a town than there are churches or, you know, any other public institutions or anything like that. Uh, it's uh, there's only one buyer and usually, you know, two or three stores uh, sponsored by the government that can sell beer. So at the LCBO, the beer store. And I think there's one more like specialty thing that can do uh, do the sales. Oh yeah, thanks. but <laughs> <laughs> poor, poor Rob. So chilly. Yeah, it, it's been windy all day today. It's just been terrible. It's it's sunny, but it's windy. Um, so one of the promises Doug Ford had uh, for Ontario, what he is that he was going to deregulate the market and make it easier for uh, not only small craft brewers and that, but like corner stores, grocery stores to carry beer. However. Uh, the contract between the government and the LCBO uh, is, you know, signed every, you know, five, ten years, somewhere in that time frame. Oh, I think it's even more stupid than that. Something on the, like, ten to fifteen years. Oh, it's a, okay. Like so it's, it's a big one. Then it's one of those where they they hamstring any government that comes in with, well, we signed this with the government two cycles ago, so you're fucked. Yeah. Okay. So okay, in that case, so it's even worse than I thought it was. But so Doug Doug Ford has been adamant about bringing like buck beers back and all that and, you know, making it easier for people. And he uh, came out, it was a couple months ago, that he was going to allow, again, these various stores to carry it. However, that inf interfered with the exclusivity uh, agreement with the Elsebo beer store. So he's breaking it. And unfortunately, the penalties for that is... I, I'm trying to remember, $250 million? Yeah, it's something ridiculously stupid. And as Rob said, if he had just literally waited 16 months, the contract would have expired and wouldn't have been a, a problem at all. <laughs> so, yeah, a, Ontario, a bit of Ontarians are kind of pissed off because while they're happy that their choices are going to expand, um, the... Uh, the uh, the cost to the government is because it, it's not just two hundred fifty uh, million. There's other associated costs with it too. I heard I saw one figure was like nine hundred million all told. Yeah, well, the ridiculous part is even though you cancel it right away, it's not like oh, all of a sudden the rules are good and then it's like the beer starts flowing. Like it takes time for that to happen too. So it's like by the time it's all said and done, you kind of just waited and then <laughs> if you just announced that you weren't going hey, to do it hey this is going to happen in and then everyone else and then would be ready gear up could have has yeah. like 16 months to gear, get ready for it but yeah yeah i know oh and then also man Brandon, i thought it would be sunnier in your backyard <laughs> like I, sh I showed up in shorts <laughs> and a t-shirt <laughs> sorry man <laughs> like it's we got a, we got decent shade coverage it's actually really nice in the middle of summer when it's like 30 degrees out everywhere mm -hmm. else and, and it's, it's going to be a hot summer so yeah. it's going to be nice <laughs> <laughs> but but for now, poor Rob suffering. Yeah, normally it doesn't. Well, I got I got I some pants in the house too. Yeah. If you want to borrow, <laughs> no, I'm not, it's not that. No, bad. Give, give him all the swim trunks you have in the uh, <laughs> the bathroom there for guests of the got hot tub. <laughs> Just layer up, bud. Layer you up from small to extra large. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so that covers the uh, Ontario beer news. Uh, uh, we have a new beer. We do have we a new do. beer. And uh, this, this is what it sounds like. No. <laughs> and this is also what it sounds like. Mine's already open. Yeah, you gave a little bit to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> but at long last, uh, it's started flowing into stores. Uh, oh, that's really good. This is the first time I've had it in yeah, the can. The Dark Ritual Watermelon Goza is for sale for everyone in Alberta. 
to, uh, to order in at your local uh, local beer store. And who knows? It might be featured this summer. I'm not sure. But, uh, yeah, this it's out, and it's tasty. Yep. The Rocky Mountain Wine and Food Folk sounded pretty excited for it. So, mm-hmm. um, Pro, or I guess little tidbit, there's some Norse letters on the watermelon on the can. Uh, it says... Tasty melon, in case anyone is wondering. <laughs> I, oh, I thought, it, I thought it was good melon, but tasty melon is also tasty, good. It's tasty, is melon, tasty yeah. melon is also good. Um, so <laughs> compared to the original Goza, uh, because this was done uh, like with our, our brew partner uh, last spike, and using, uh, it was the second time they had ever used this yeast that's using this, which is the Philly Sour. Because uh, he, I, I still remember the day he gave me a call and he's asking me a whole bunch of technical questions on this. And I'm like, I'm a home brewer. Like, I don't Buddy, <laughs> throw it in, wait a day, see what the fuck happens. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Because uh, with the fruit edition, he's like, well, it, you know, how is that going to interact? Because the Philly Sour has a lactic uh, yeast start and then switches to a normal yeast afterwards. And he's like, you know, at the crossover, like, is that like, is it going to add more to the lactic or the others? I'm like, I don't know. I I add the, the fruit on day ten. That's all I do. <laughs> or sorry, I add it on day five, and then by day ten, it's about done. Um, so this actually came out um, on a sour scale, about a, a one on the like the one two three like kettle scale about a one it's really it's like just slightly tart yeah it's yes. really light for, on the for those of you who uh don't know the kettle sour scale the one is the acceptable level <laughs> um, for brendan's anything and other, above like, that <laughs> becomes unacceptably sour uh because generally i you know because when i used to make this at home uh, i usually did a two-day sour which is a two on the scale and yeah like this and came- yet still ended up tasting quite like this. yeah but yeah, like this came out super smooth. The watermelon is super light in it. It's you know, it it's a really nice subtle flavor to it, and just a little bit of salt. Kind of plays. You, I can taste the salt. Yeah, I could kind of. It's got a nice play. <laughs> Interesting thing. So first step there, I got a lot of the the kind of the the head on it, and mm-hmm. the watermelon comes out a lot in the aroma and the the head, mm-hmm. as opposed to through just through the taste, just, just straight through the flavor profile. Mm-hmm. So it's it's definitely there, and it. It's, I don't know. I like it. This is this is my favorite sour beer. This is the only sour beer I'll drink. <laughs> and and like the funny thing with it too is like, um, it, like because of the process, like a lot of the watermelon sugar I think gets like gets consumed by that yeast. Uh, but again, you're right. Like the 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 aroma and flavor, uh, the, those non sugar ones still stay in the beer, so it still comes out very, you know, volatilely <laughs> when you open up the can. You're like, ooh, Absolutely. that's like. That's a smelly, tasty can. Good smell. <laughs> so this is excellent. Unfortunately, we uh, missed the the release for Calgary Beer Fest, but we do have a number of other opportunities for people to taste it coming up here fairly quickly, actually. Extremely like, fast. We actually they, this got Friday. This brew on Friday. <laughs> so, so tomorrow, by the time people hear this. Yes. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I think we might have so mentioned... So for, for our listeners in Australia, it might be a bit tight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry, Garrett. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this uh, Friday, uh, the zoo is doing a fund, uh, fundraiser called Zoo Brew. So after hours, view the animals and drink beer and eat delicious food at the zoo. So we'll be uh, from there from 5.30 to 7.30. We're the first shift uh, that's coming through. And it's a it's a fundraiser, so it's all like all all you can eat, all you can drink. The tickets are a little a little on the steep side, but hundred bucks when I last saw. Yeah, which you know, considering it's like your entrance to the zoo is like thirty odd bucks of that, and then you get to drink as much as you want. Yeah, I think it's more than that. You, you I, think goes, I think that includes the food, food too. Right? Well. Yeah, oh, yeah, like holy cow! I think that's a pretty good. Deal. And it's the after that's dark adults dinner. only. Yeah. yeah, like it's that's pretty sweet. Like last time we were at the zoo, like we saw the polar bear. He was in the water. In his new enclosure and all that, and he was like, they had a bucket down there with food in it, and he was trying to get down, like get underneath it and claw it out. So he was just like doing somersaults and all that in front of the the water display, and we just sat there for like twenty minutes. It was amazing. Yes, <laughs> the polar bears are amazing. Mm-hmm. And the tigers are still cool, even though they're in the old enclosure. Yes, they they are on the old enclosure on the far side by uh, Dinny the Dino. So between the two, you'll 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 capture the entire zoo, and I don't know where we're located. 
Is that because of uh, the guy who uh, jumped into the cage that one time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, it is. So, like, the amount of sec- the security that's in the tiger cage is, like, impressive because all of the trees also have to have iron bars on them with spikes pointed down so the tigers don't climb up and get to a vantage point where they can then jump over the, the fence. It's kind of impressive. It's actually funny to contrast, like, the tiger cage to the red red panda cage. Yeah, which is... Yeah, uh, which is right, right near there. And the red pandas are kind of like, eh, they might get out. <laughs> the tigers, they're like, nothing, nothing is ever entering or leaving this cage. <laughs> A little bit of a different danger profile. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Absolutely. <laughs> one is just fluffy and cuddly. The other one might eat you. Yep. But yeah, I can't remember where we're at. Like where we're our setup. Say. Oh, okay, so we'll we'll get to we'll find out when we get there. there yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, no, yeah, we'll be doing that for. Yeah, you know, I think we're only there for two and a half hours, and then like we're free to leave, sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> we're we're not allowed to go and sample because uh, apparently the. Uh, so people got too boisterous uh, who were working the event <laughs> last uh, last couple of years, so they got rid of that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, we'll be there. We'll have four of our beers. We'll have Friends Night Out, The Dark Ritual, uh, Missing Peace, and... Kiss. Kiss. What about uh, Tears Just Beachy? Could bring that, too. Yeah, I think. Do we have cases of that? Ah, uh, we got tons in the shop, yeah. We yeah. yeah, okay. We can go I have tons. We, we have several cases. <laughs> yeah. But this is a good event for it. Yes. Yeah. We definitely could. And then uh, later in a few weeks, we've got Olds Beer Fest. Beer Fest. Beer Fest again. Beer Olds. <laughs> Unfortunately, during a time when my airport is closed, so I won't be able to fly there. But um, still, we'll be there. Yeah. Uh, that one's going to be interesting because... The Airdrie Airport is closed? It is on that day, yeah. Take is, is it a Just racing day? on the grass. <laughs> you do five flying lessons and you feel like you know the rules. <laughs> you can do it. You already have to taxi on. That's it. <laughs> it's just faster. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, I'm assuming it's a ra- it's a race weekend at the air. It tree. is a race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a race weekend. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Old Beer Fest is going to be interesting because its its scale is going to be much different. It's uh, again like there's only about twenty twenty five breweries. Something well, like I that. feel like it'll be more similar to like the Oktoberfest that we did last year and we're doing again this year in August. Yeah. Uh, as well as uh, hopefully a little bit bigger than the Cochrane Show that you did there. I feel like uh, Old might be a little ago, bit but... rowdier. Yeah. Well, I, I think that's going to be more of a hick. I mean that in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, because some when good old rowdy, uh, not a good thing. Some good old country boys are gonna come in and they're gonna drink some beers. <laughs> oh man, it would be amazing if someone came up in a horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't it at the egg center, anyways? <laughs> I there think should, so. Yeah, there, yeah, should, there should be a hitching post there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I think that'll work. Um, and then, yeah, like we've got those two events, like again within the next three weeks, and then we get our first like real break since the uh, beginning of the season in March, that we'll be able to uh, kind of relax a bit in the summer and wait until Octo- uh, October. October Fest. Fest. Yeah, we October. have exactly one month of break. In July and a bit. Yeah. July, and a bit. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's been it's been busy so. I got again. We got our, all, our, all all of our high profile ones out of the way. So, just Rocky Mountain Wine Food Fest at the end of the year. Uh, yeah, that one's November, October, October, you, October, October November usually. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Well, if anybody had any other exciting events to book up our calendar in July or September, how would they let us know, Rob? I knew that was coming. <laughs> Uh, go check out our website, solutionsbrewing.com, and uh, there's a contact us page there. You can hit it, send, which sends us an email at noproblems at solutionsbrewing.com. And of course, we're always available on Facebook and Instagram at Solutions Brewing Co. Yeah, and if you sign up, you'll get a newsletter once a month. And you know, also- <laughs> you could say that, but I just realized earlier this afternoon that I, I forgot to send out the, no, the June one, so you know. Maybe you'll get one. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Maybe July. We'll shoot for July. 
if you have subscribed to our newsletter and you haven't received your latest issue, please email us <laughs> no problems at solutionsbrewing.com so that we know that people are actually reading our newsletter and we will start to issue more regular updates. <laughs> Send an email with the subject Rob WTF. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say that could be a lot of things though uh, you're going to have to be a little bit more specific than Rob no, no, WTF no, that's, that's, that's fine as a subject line just include something more in the body of you <laughs> um, also if you would like to purchase any of our delicious beers including the recently released Dark Ritual Watermelon Goza indeed it is online we do home deliveries folks yep Calgary yep. and area Cochrane and Airdrie Cochrane, Airdrie and Okotoks maybe Chestermere yeah. if I'm willing yeah, to yeah, drive we, out there yeah. Chestermere yeah. for sure yeah. 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 God, yeah, for sure Okotoks I don't know Okotoks is oh well, Okotoks I would send you down to Okotoks in a heartbeat <laughs> <laughs> yeah you would send me you're, like, you're like 10 minutes from there <laughs> I'm like 20 minutes from yeah, there yeah yeah, I'm probably. from Airtree and I would do it and it'd be a great motorcycle ride <laughs> there yeah. you go yeah, that's you on your motorcycle you're like ah this is just pleasure for me alright yeah so Okotoks <laughs> delivery is guaranteed until maybe the winter <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was going to say, my, my vehicle doesn't have uh, four-wheel drive anymore, so... <laughs> that doesn't matter. <laughs> Driving on the roads. <laughs> have you seen some of the roads down in oh, Okotoks? Bit of a bit of order increases in the winter so that Steve gets traction. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I need at least a four-case minimum delivery, so at least I have enough weight in the back. <laughs> All right, guys. Whatever, spiraling quick. So. Yeah. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs> we'll talk to you Thanks for listening. <laughs>